All right, the next thing that we're going to do is start on writing our introduction. Um, this may be one of the most difficult parts of your lab report, especially if you have a lot of background information to provide. Um, um, it all has to be written in your own words. You know, this isn't something that you write before you do your experiment. It's kind of trying to bring it all together. Um, so to give you a little background on my experiment, that is just an example. So this isn't a real um, experiment that I ran, but I generated some data for it. So it's based on the idea that uh, people use these healing crystals um, to uh, try to, I don't know, alter their mood or to fix certain ailments they might have. Um, so I read this article about it. Um, the article told me that there's no evidence for crystal healing, um, but people still, you know, do it. So um, that is what the, the kind of background information that I need to give my readers. Um, for my actual experiment, what I've done here is my question is, you know, can rose quartz improve mood? I thought that it was probably maybe the placebo effect, and I predicted that if the person didn't know the crystal was there, then their mood wouldn't change. Um, so here's the data that I ended up with, um, and so that's kind of where you'll some, you'll be starting with something like this. You'll know what your question, your hypothesis, and your prediction was. You'll already have written and run your experiment. You'll have some data. Um, so you really need to set your reader up with this background information. Um, so um, I already have um, some background information written here, so I'm not going to type it out. I'm going to just paste what I have and then go through it. I'll take off this highlighting so that you can see a little more clearly. Let's zoom in a little bit too as well. Okay, um, so this first sentence is just trying to grab the reader's attention. Um, so crystal healing is an alternative medicine in which users carry around different gemstones to change their mood or cause healing. So this is kind of common knowledge. Anyone who's been walked around Los Angeles, seen all the crystal shops, you're probably aware of this alternative medicine. Um, and then I go on to uh, talk about, you know, what is the belief behind this practice. Um, so they believe that gems have special properties which can be felt by being near certain gemstones. And then I present my question. Um, so your question can be after you present all your background information. It can be at the beginning. It can be embedded in the middle like mine is. Um, as long as it is there, that is fine with me. Some teachers may not even ask you to include the question, but I certainly do. So here's the question. Can touching a crystal really have a psychic effect on a person? Um, I have a little bit more background information that I present here. So though there are no published studies which have shown crystals to use uh, to have any use in medicine, there are still many people who purchase a variety of stones for their medicinal benefits. So this is not common knowledge, and this is not my own idea. I, I, I didn't like think of this myself. I actually read it in this article. Um, so I didn't copy and paste this, as you can see. However, I kind of paraphrased it in my own words and put it in my lab report. However, I'm still using someone else's idea, so to avoid plagiarism, I have to give the author credit. Um, so if you look back here, you can see that this was written by someone named Elizabeth Palermo, um, and so I need to give her credit for her, you know, her idea, what she said. So you can see that I have an in-text citation here, um, and not only that, um, I need to provide a reference as well. Um, so some of you are new to APA, APA referencing um, this website called um, Purdue Online Writing Lab is really useful. It can help you figure out how to do a citation um, for all sorts of different references. Um, so I've clicked this one, Electronic Sources. Um, and I kind of I kind of scrolled down and looked at all the different information that might be included. Um, so this is the format right here. Um, and so based on this, I created a reference, which I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste rather than typing it out for you. And I'm going to put it down here in my reference area. Um, you can see it starts with the last name of the author. 
Um, then uh, you put a dot, a period, the title in parentheses, the name of the online magazine, which is Live Science, uh, the date, the link, and then the date that I actually accessed it, which was April 15th. So if I have a reference at the bottom in proper APA form um, and an in-text citation, then I've done a good job about avoiding plagiarism. So if you're confused about this, you should definitely ask me for more help or do some research online like at the Purdue um, OWL, Purdue O-W-L. Um, so this is the only sentence in my introduction that is not my own idea, so it's the only one that needs an in-text citation. So after that I can just continue. Okay, so it says, despite the lack of evidence, online and storefront retailers continue to market and sell gems for their healing and mood altering properties. So this paragraph does a good job of providing the reader with all of the information they might need so they can understand the purpose of my experiment um, and the importance of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new paragraph. Um, background information is pretty much covered at this point. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the purpose, the purpose of the experiment and why, not only the purpose, but why the, it is actually important. So here, I'm going to start a new paragraph and then I'll take away my highlighting. Okay, the purpose of the study was to determine whether the presence of a crystal could significantly alter a person's mood. So that's just the basic premise of why this was performed. One thing you'll also notice here is that I'm writing in past tense. Um, I did a lot of research to try to figure out if, you know, it was right to do, you know, past tense or future tense for this. People do not seem to be in agreement. So I decided to choose past tense for my lab report um, and I'm going to stick with that throughout. For my lab reports, if you write, you know, um, in, in another tense, it's going to be okay with me as long as you're not changing back and forth. So I will stick to past tense throughout my introduction. Um, okay, so I've stated the purpose. This next part, I am going to talk about the importance of the study and why it matters. Um, so hopefully you're not doing some sort of experiment where you're going to find an answer that you already know about. All, you know, science is about finding um, new answers to new questions so you've got to outline you know why this is an important question to answer so um, I've got that there next I'll need to state my hypothesis so hypothesis tends to be very confusing for you guys it is really a a testable explanation not a prediction prediction and hypothesis are two different things so a hypothesis is basically you telling your reader how you think the world works. So for this one, I said, um, we hypothesize that the perceived effect of a mood altering crystal is limiting, limited to the placebo effect and not the psychic properties of gemstones. So I'm saying how I think the world works here, um, which is that crystals can't uh, alter your mood and that it's probably due to something like the placebo effect. Then I can talk about my prediction. Notice this is in past tense. Um, and I said, we, uh, assuming this most of your projects are group projects, and you will probably be saying we, but if it's just you, you can say I. Um, so this is what a prediction looks like as compared to a hypothesis. So um, this led to, led, okay. This led to the prediction that if a subject is unaware of the presence of a crystal, they will not report a change in their mood significantly more than exposure to a, an inert an inert rock. I'm already finding all of these types. An inert rock or no object at all. So this is a prediction, and it is linked very tightly to what I'm going to do in my experiment. Um, so we are doing good so far. We have background information with citations. We've got a testable question. I've got a hypothesis and a prediction here. Um, for some teachers, this is going to be plenty to continue with the lab report. I would also like you to talk about your variables very 
specifically um, because that's one thing that you are learning in my classes is how to deal with variables and control them. So I'm going to add another paragraph which is just talking about variables. Um, so other teachers may not require it, but I would like you to do it for me, please. Okay, so um, it's kind of you're just talking about your experiment in terms of variables. So for this experiment, we investigated the effect of rose quartz, one of the most commonly sold healing crystal, crystals, on a subject's reported mood. We measured the dependent variable, the subject reported mood, by administering a simple mood survey before and after each trial. So I'm telling you what my dependent variable is, which is mood. Remember, remember that dependent variable is what you're measuring in your experiment. Okay, so I've talked about that, now I've got to talk about independent. So we manipulated the independent variable, the exposure to rose quartz, by having the subject hold a rose quartz crystal or a rock. Um, so for this one, independent variable is what you are changing. In this experiment, we're changing whether or not they're exposed to rose quartz. They either are or they are not. And then I talk a little bit about how we controlled other variables um, as well. So size, shape, and weight of the crystal and the rock, um, the time of exposure as well. So whatever you're keeping the same in your experiment, you'll also want to talk about that here. Um, and so from, from my class, the introduction can be about three paragraphs uh, long, as long as you have background information with in-text in citations and references at the end, a testable question, a hypothesis, a prediction, and then a discussion of the variables, uh, you are looking at getting an A 